What fun to have the Celebrations Choir today. I just have a couple words for you. A couple words for you, a couple words for you, a couple words for you, words for you, words for you. Hello, hello, hello. Words for you. Advent, alleluia, amen, afraid, angel, anger, advice, and answer. Ha! They've got a word fine in case the sermon's boring, so... If I talk about xylophones or zebras, you'll know what's going on. I find I turn to Henry Nowen a fair amount. He's a writer who writes devotionals, uh, who has a lot to say, especially in times when anxiety is high or there's a lot of pressure going on or I sort of forget where, who I am and where I'm going begin to wonder about relationships, I turn to Henry Nouwen in my devotions. Nouwen says, when a child is born, friends get married, parents die, loved ones suffer through long illnesses, political divisions tear apart the social fabric. It is not enough to know about these things and to celebrate, grieve, or to respond as best we can. We have to keep asking ourselves, what does it all mean? What is God trying to tell us? How are we called to live in the midst of all this? Without asking such questions, our lives become numb and flat and lifeless. Are there answers? Henry Nouwen says yes, but he says we'll never find them unless we are willing to live into the questions and grow into the answers. Nouwen helps me to look at the story of Joseph differently. When Mary and Joseph were engaged to be married, but before they live together, she is found to be pregnant with child. So, here's a question. What's Joseph to do about this situation? What new life does this question offer him? How is God calling him through the question of Mary's pregnancy and what it means for his own life? He answers the questions in two ways. First, he thinks about how Mary's pregnancy will affect him and how he will look to others. To continue to be engaged with her would mean that he would be marrying a woman for what he can see who's been unfaithful to him during their engagement. And then he would be responsible to raise the child that he did not father, and everyone in the community would know it. Or everyone would see all this as proof that Joseph had had relations with Mary. In either case, Joseph would not have been seen as a righteous man, which appears to be important to him. And so we are told that he is unwilling to expose her to public disgrace and decides to dismiss her quietly. This is the part of the story that's dripping with irony, I think. His Righteousness, his self righteousness secured by his unwillingness to publicly shame Mary. If he had publicly shamed Mary, she would have been banished, she and her child, from human society. If she was lucky, if not, she would have been taken out and stoned by the other righteous people in town. So Joseph, as a righteous man, resolves to dismiss Mary quietly, as much for his own benefit as for hers. This resolution seems to me is an example of asking the wrong question and thus forming a bad answer. Upon learning that Mary is with child, 
Joseph does not ask at first, what does this mean and what is God trying to say to me? He asks instead, what will people think of me and what will they say about me? And his resolution to to dismiss Mary will make him look righteous and make him look merciful, but will come at her expense. The question, what does it mean and what is God trying to say amid all of this and the very difficult questions that lead, it, lead us in our life, they lead us to different kind of answers. Not so much answers as to new paths and new ways, new directions, ways that we have to go, doors that open, a portal as it were, a new world, a new reality, where we live as we dream where we open our hearts to good questions, where we go in new directions we could not have seen before, and where life is filled with meaning. And such is, after all, the case with Joseph, because the story does not end with his obedience to public morality, but he stays open to God who is trying to say something to him. Xylophone zebra. The scriptural formula for God talking to humans is the form of an angel, which literally translates into messenger. Angels come in many forms, as we know, offering messages we need to hear if we are willing to make changes and adjustments we need to make if we are to grow into the answer God intends for us in our lives. Coaches, school counselors can be messengers, angels of God, though they might not even know it themselves. Doctors who challenge us to take better care of ourselves can be messengers, angels from God. Feelings within us of anger can give us important messages if we dare to ask the questions of what it communicates to us and to others. When our children struggle, when there's conflict in our families, these too can be messages for us to listen to. In the case of Joseph, <clears throat> the messenger is a dream that helps him to see his underlying motivation for dismissing Mary is because He is afraid, and his fear-driven decision-making leads him astray. Do not be afraid, the messenger says, to take Mary as your wife, God giving Joseph an answer to grow into, a promise of what lies ahead for him and for his family and for us. This dream, Joseph's willingness to turn away from self-righteousness and worrying about what people will think, the courage to change his mind and open himself to follow the promises of God in a new direction. This is what love looks like. This is why we remember Joseph and celebrate his faithfulness. Love remains open and grows stronger and deeper and finds new answers and creates new lives and new paths rather than resisting and hiding in resentments and fears and keeps us focused on the past and leaves us vulnerable to what people think of us. If these changes come, love always makes room for these changes. God invites us always to ask, what does this mean? Because life is filled with meaning. God invites us to wonder what God is trying to say to us because God speaks to us continually through messengers that challenge us to grow and offer us answers if we will understand the messages that they are giving us. Case of Joseph, we see love in its purest form, openness to learn, to grow, a quality of love that welcomes growth and change in the beloved, the courage to set aside fear and expectations and trust that there is a way forward that he cannot see in advance. We might not be surprised 
given Joseph's love for Mary, that Jesus grows to be a man who teaches us to think of God as a loving Father. May God grant us hearts open to love as Joseph loved. May we, may we listen to the messengers God sends our way, and may our lives declare that God is with us, God is in us, and God lives through us. Amen.